what's gonna happen in this. I chose to do the stream at the worst time possible, I think. <coughs> Sorry. No, it's okay. I was like, oh, I can do it in the middle of my arena payout, and then check my arena, and I was like, oh, maybe not. <laughs> See what happens. Not going well at all. That could have been worse. What else? Bath with me after? Sure. Yeah, bubble baths. <laughs> uh, oh, maybe that was not the right target. Sup, Moriarty. Sorry, I didn't have the chat initiated and I'm distracted because I wasn't expecting my arena climb to be as not rough it as it is but it's not it wasn't aligned up very well we'll say it that way and I isolated the wrong target this is gonna go bad let's see I forget if Trey yeah Trey is gonna climb down this is all bad this is all bad. He's gonna annihilate. That oh, yep. She's gonna isolate me again. <coughs> Before I can land another one. I'm gonna burn crystal just to keep the stream going so everybody can watch me fail at arena today. Merp. He's two turns away from his annihilate, maybe one now. The problem is the isolation. Hi everybody. Hi everybody. Alright, so the goal is to talk about mods, but I chose this during my arena path. I think if I land my annihilate and annihilate first I win. But the key is the timer and the nest and the and the and the Yeah, okay. I think I got this. Let's do this. Sorry, everybody. Not the best start. Not the best start. That's two, two turns. Two turns left. As long as she doesn't isolate him again, I should be set. <laughs> Called it. She's gonna heal too much and so is Nest for me to kill anything in time. So this is just gonna be a wasted five minutes of my life. I think my Cyan can kill that Nest outright though. Just properly. Almost. Yeah, basic attacks? No. Timer. Out timed. Out timed. Failed, failed, failed. Shouldn't have isolated Treya. Super bad. Alright, sorry. Now I'm on a time crunch. What I got? 40 minutes to get through three battles? Okay, I'm gonna burn crystal to speed the process up. It'll be great. So watch me do some arena fights. So we'll talk about arena. 
His nest opens, which gives him control. If the daze lands on my Nihilus, he has control of the beginning of the fight, which gives him full control, as you noticed. And the AI plays it really smart, because that's exactly how I would have opened with. I want my daze to land on his Nihilus, which only lasts until Nihilus gets a turn. Uh, during this time now, I'm going to start pounding away on Thrawn. Um, we, Thrawn's the uh, <coughs> only one that can't remove buffs in this situation, but he's going to... That's perfect. I want an infraction. And then stun nest out of here. Um, you don't want to apply debuffs to the try and bury it. You want to avoid doing that because it's going to give uh, Nihilus turn meter until he gets isolated. Um, giving my Nihilus that uh, isolate bonus buff would not have worked, so there's no point. So I gave it to Ness to try and lower the cooldown of the Ness uh, cannonball. Uh, perfect. I think my Annihilate is on a faster cooldown. He might have another one coming up very soon. That could be a problem. Except for this. Yeah. And that. Nope. Didn't work. If you have any questions, you can ask away. I think I get to annihilate. No. It's gonna be on Scion. Yeah. My annihilate has to be on Scion. Because I have pain. Pain. Yeah. I wanted to do Treya, but it has to be on Scion. His annihilate's coming up cooldown. And that's a problem. This will not kill him, but it will cause the Sith Trooper to taunt, which the goal is to keep that going. No, never mind, Ness is just going to remove that. <coughs> That's why Ness is beast, because of all the turn meter, meter stealing. I think my cooldowns have been reduced like four times while I haven't had a turn on my Ness, or my Nihilus, it's great. Sorry guys, I got stuck in a arena limbo and I needed to do some battles because my payout is coming up here. So I'm trying to crank through that really quick for you. Nest. That'll heal up Sith Trooper. This is it for you, Mr. Nihilus. Yep. And my sick trooper's gone. <coughs> I'm pretty sure that's a good game. Except she, she's gonna keep doing that. Can't land a debuff on her for saving my life. All right, after this, I'm going to try the uh, special mission on um, Dark Side ter Territory Battle um, and epically fail. But I'm also going to demonstrate mod loaders, which hopefully won't epically fail. That did not work. get one more turn to kill her. Yes. Okay. Mod loadouts. It's not the exact way I would have fought that fight. I have two more fights I need to complete and the stream has already been nine minutes. Fail. Okay. Nope. Here we go. Everybody join your territory war. Should say enter now. Not the cannot join thing. You can. You can. Um... Okay, so uh, the team I've decided that I can best run with um, was this team. And that's scary, but 
Um, I went into all their mods and I assigned them um, a loadout or saved their loadout essentially so that way I can switch them into my arena team loadouts. Um, uh, so I, yeah, I have it all kind of planned out. So, uh, Fears is getting my Treya set, which crazy bumps up his speed. Um, and then, uh, Thrawn already has a set, so I don't need to, need to change his loadout. Um, Palpatine's going on Snowtrooper. Uh, Scion is going on, um, Stark should increase his survivability. Oh no, I forgot about the, the other mod. Let's see. What is that? Yeah? No? I don't know. Uh, oh no, I forgot about the gear 12s. Oh, who's the rat? Uh, Dun Dun. Snow's gonna get my Emperor Palpatine set, which is currently a crit damage set, which isn't really good. So I'm gonna try and change that out. But was that same warning on Veers? Does Veers still have a crappy? Did I not get the full tree of loadout? Oh no, it's Nihilus. Okay, so we're not gonna get the circle on my probe droid is not going to be able to take Nihilus' circle because he's not gear 12. Um, so I'm going to have to find a different circle. Yeah, okay. Remember, remember, I don't think I have another. Oh, maybe. Sure, fuck it. I'll take it for the potency. 80% potency. Okay, so now my team has all my arena mods and it was just that simple. Uh, the preparation that went into that took like 15 minutes was just kind of bold. There's not an easy way to navigate. Um, but yeah, anyways, I've also done a bunch of research to try and figure out the best kill order for these and everything. I brought Thrawn along for that exact moment right there. No, um, there's plenty of times throughout this fight where you just feel like you need a little bit more control. Um, and I definitely don't have the mods to do this easily. Um, I mean, the, mod, the gear to do this easily on this team. Um, so they're going to heal a lot, uh, and they're going to buff a lot, but I think I got this. If I can get one of them dead, I should be good, because I should be able to heal up. But I might just fail epically, and everybody will laugh on the stream while I'll just sit and lull. don't want to blow up. I need to remind myself because the only time I ever use probe droid is yeah I'm gonna lose. Good game. Fail. This healing is just too much. I think I should have brought death trooper. I don't know. All that mod swapping is gonna have to go back to my arena team now. Black. Don't want that tank tanking. And I think the stealth is what screwed me in this taunt. Nope. No dice. Epic fail. I'm so sorry. Yeah, I need to gear him up more. Uh, that's the other thing I was talking to <coughs> talk about on the stream is I'm sitting on a lot of gear and I'd love to dump it, but I'm really worried that they're gonna throw some back to back uh, events coming up. I failed. Oh, maybe I should just play it out, uh, just in case. Oops, misclick. Sorry. Um. Yeah, I, I'm worried that they're gonna throw some back-to-back -back events at us that we're just not gonna be 100% prepared for gear-wise. Um, Cause I think one of the things that they, cause oh, the, the way they've re released all the characters so far. Um, a little bit early, beating their cadences, um, like trying to make sure that they're doing everything on the up and up for us, um, has really set me up to believe that, no, that was a waste of 50 crystals because I'm sitting here talking. I'm not currently even modded. <laughs> um, so the way that they've been doing the release cadence <coughs> leads me to believe that they are trying to give us plenty of time to farm up the characters 
I don't think they want you to panic farm. If you caught all the hints, like they've been dropping and, um, so then the question is like, how are they going to monetize it? Or where's the trick going to be? Because I still think that there's going to be a little bit of a trick where they, they do something, right? It's not just the characters. It's also like something else that they're going to pull. And I think what's going to happen is we're going to, um, focus on the scoundrels a lot and there will be some cool stuff around the scoundrels and we'll we'll go and do that and then as soon as the scoundrels are done they're gonna follow it up with the kotor characters and we're just not gonna have the gear resources the credit resources and everything else to level them up get them up high enough to complete that event because if it's anything like a throne event um legendary that was not a easy to do legendary the phoenix team had to be pretty substantially geared um, for you to do it. So that's why I'm just sitting on resources, which isn't the best, for example, failing a special mission and hurting my guild, and I'm sorry, everybody. Um, I think he's got mods, and I think Ness has mods, so I think we're good to go, other than Palpatine needs his mods back, but the rest of them need their mods back as well. So, um, yeah, I just really feel like I need to conserve, which is also extremely boring. Uh, the whole point of this game is to, like, power up, get stronger, um, and just sitting there watching my teams not get stronger um, and not succeed like I want them to sucks. Her isolating nest equals a win for me. Um, I'll be able to control the battle because nest doesn't care. Um, she they could potentially kill nest because he's isolated, but I don't think that's going to happen that fast. Especially because they won't focus nest. It's just bad AI. Normally it, pays, it plays it pretty intelligently, but... I shouldn't have AoE, because I just made Ness. Okay, you isolate Nihilus. <coughs> Here we go. Much easier battle than the last one. Um, I kind of want to stun their nest. Okay, and then we'll talk about mods after this fight, because then I'll have, what, yeah, 20 minutes left. I think I could auto this, but I just want to speed it up, and I think it'll be faster if I play it smart. And land those exposes. Uh, Nihilus's health pool uh, under trail lead is just, well, under the triumph variant, plus trail lead's ability to heal is just insane. In a good way, but. Here we go. Let's not waste everybody's time, except I feel like I am. We'll, do, we'll, do, do, we'll figure it out. The mod stuff is what y'all came for, and that's like, you know. Not 20 minutes away, I promise. This is scary. I think I want to keep... No. Yeah. No. I think I'm... No. Eh, no. I'll annihilate Scion. And we'll just play it safe. Because I'll be able to saber throw Nihilus next turn. Psh, psh. Um, yeah, it, um, sorry, City said in the chat that his, uh, solo characters are good. Again, for me, I, I, character shards are what I care about right now, and I'm feeling good about the character shards, and I've saved a bunch of gear on both accounts in hopes, that's not the right word, in preparation, uh, for them not, or needing gear, so we'll see what happens. Okay, to the, to the main attraction... Uh, so, uh, kind of about what I was <coughs> working on. We know the two factions, three factions, but two factions. If they do a legendary bounty hunter event, which based off of Django's announcement, we don't think that's probably happening, but we'll see. Uh, but 
it'll be a legendary event, which means they'll say, you need seven star bounty hunters, and I feel comfortable on this account, and less comfortable, but still able to on the other account. Um, so I recommend having five seven star bounty hunters. They, they have never required a specific bounty hunter for a specific character for a, a legendary event. Um, so to get R2-D2, you just need Empire. So along with that, I feel good if they did a bounty hunter. Now, of course, they could always just throw a curveball and say this is not a legendary event. It's a brand new type of event for us, and that'll be fun. Um, the other thing I'm working on then is not my bounty hunters I feel good about, not just gear, but also character shards, but then the uh, new tag that they just added, which is Smuggler, which has some missing faces that we would expect, expect Lando, um, some other stuff. But I got L3 done, I got Young Han done. Young Han takes a week for any active player. Um, if they're in an active guild participating in every raid, they'll get enough resources to farm, farm Young Han in a week. So even the week of the event, you can farm him up um, if there is an event based off these guys. Um, I do believe, based off of the announcements of the Smuggler's Run event, uh, which we can see about, uh, you will need, an, or we know for sure that you will need six star characters. Um, but they also said there's some other stuff surrounding the event of the Smuggler's Run. Um, I, in my previous conversation about Smuggler's, said that L3 was my primary farm for, uh, for these guys in Cantina. Um, and that is true for myself. On my other account, I did not finish L3, so I stopped, even though I was pretty close to 7 star, to switch to Kira, because for the scoundrel or the smuggler's run event, you will need a leader, and none of these guys are leaders except for Kira, so I'm going to need Kira. Um, the other, obviously, Nest I got lucky on, um, and then the other characters... Um, I don't think are mandatory, obviously, because like Han Solo and the vets are here, so I'll just use them. Um, but I'm still farming them up, slowly but surely. Um, and then finally, oops, uh, the Old Republic tag that also was recently added. Um, I think this is... This is their long game. But I could be wrong. But I don't... I mean, that, that's what I mean by panic farming is... So these two characters... Sorry, a T3 is... Um, was technically released with Bastila if you had the um, Android device, but if you had an i device, he was the third release. The other two came in pairs. So these ones would come out in the next two weeks, and this one in the next three weeks, giving their current cadence, which would then give us a month to a month and a half to farm them up, depending on where they release. Um, Maybe not that long if they release in easier to farm locations and then Jolie and Bestlo would be the harder ones. But if this team is the team, the legendary, this is what we should be focusing on. Um, I, that's, what, that's why I think all these other events are like, not really distractions, but they're resource pullers. They pull the resources away from your focus on this event. Um, so that's the hard part is like judging where to chase kind of thing. And so, um, leading into mods is how much crystal you're spending on refreshes and that was what I kind of wanted to talk about is for the most part um, as you'll see with um, arena is I share a payout and I get 450 or 500 like 50 different each day uh, with a person um, Granted, there's, there's so much luck and variation with everybody's accounts involved, but finding your crystal threshold is important because if you can guarantee yourself, I'm not saying everybody can guarantee themselves 800 credits a day or more, um, but if you can guarantee yourself two or 300 credits a day based off the two arenas, which is where the competitive play exists, um, then going and mathing out how much you can do in refreshes to get those characters is kind of step one. Um, plus the you know the new twenty five refresh and all these other things. But really, just sitting down with a pen and paper, or, you know, calculator and figuring it out takes five minutes, but it helps you plan and plot out what you're gonna do. Um, 
and then the remainder should be used in mods, which is what I'm going to talk about. Um, my fleet lineup, uh, sorry, Moriarty's asking what my fleet lineup is. My fleet lineup varies because um, we don't, I don't have all bugs. Um, so to fight a bugs team, I use this lineup. Um, these are all fully max characters except for Houndstooth, and this is actually just a test to see how far I would fall. Um, but these are these are all fully maxed. Reinforcements on the reinforcements are uh, fully maxed usually, except for the one I just showed you. Um, but I've seen some variation, or I've used some variation with Kylo's shuttle um, in my starting lineup instead of Biggs, which is just crazy, but it works. Um, I don't know some other variations. I won't go too much into fleet today. I'm sorry. I want to not waste everybody's time and talk about mods. So I've been farming up mod resources. I'm going to switch screens really quick to my alt account um, times two for everybody to try and help carry this stream a little bit um, to kind of talk about mods and what we should be doing. So uh, in my last stream, in my last video, uh, Sleepy Bear and I talked about um, um, how how much resources it you can farm realistically for 5e mods or 6e mods um, so the goal of that was to find out like if that that should be your primary goal for an end game account is getting the 6e mods um, or at least enough of them for your arena team as you can see I'm still not there yet plus I slowed down for this stream um, but then after that it's like where do I start and even then what 6e's do I do first and that's kind of what I wanted to dig into today. Um, my first thing I did, and the first thing I do each day when I'm thinking about slicing is I sort by speed. Um, the first thing you're going to see is all your speed arrows. And right now I have it set to unequipped, so then we can go to equipped. Um, and all of my speed arrows are there. So each one of these gold speed arrows would be the first ones I look at. Um, I recommend that for everybody. The primary stat only goes up by two, which isn't the best, but the base stats, if you have a really strong speed arrow that you're sitting on, um, which has a strong set and a strong secondary stats, it should be a candidate for upgrade. Um, you know, you're looking for offense, offense, crit, potency, you know, on a crit damage set, um, or any any one of those variations or protection or something and then for like a tank set you want uh, protection or protection percentage health or health percentage defense tenacity um, so you're really just looking at like okay what secondary stats do I have and does it fit with a good set so that way I can use it um, I, I don't think you're wasting on a speed arrow if you upgrade it I think it truly is one of the better things to take to 6e granted if you've noticed even as I'm saying all this, none of mine are um, 6e, and that's because I had some really fast mods that I wanted to take uh, the rest of the way and really get get the bonus effects of those. Um, but as I'm considering my next ones, I'm starting to not look at, uh, that's a really good mod, but a couple of these other, I have some newer very good mods from Slicing, sorry. Uh, but some of these other uh, stat layouts with an 18 speed this 18 speed will go up by um one and so a 19 speed mod with all these stats isn't something that i really want to chase after if i have a couple arrows that i want to go after um <coughs> excuse me so two of those a week is what i've been doing and, uh, i think it's been out for exactly three weeks because that's exactly what i have and i just started farming for my next two this week because it's the beginning of the week um and then my next step was the purples the blues and the greens even because you're just able to do so much more of those every week um, and that's kind of what i'm going to demonstrate is i don't want to swap that mod i want to splice it why is it <coughs> Am I in loadouts there we go um no it's because it was already down there i'm sorry uh so this is just like picking up more speed kind of thing so the first thing I recommend is if you sort by speed you're able to look at all your really strong mods um, speed wise um, and then finding the ones that are purple with speed already um, and bringing them up to gold and then finding the blues and bringing them up I'd stay in the 14 speed range so like 
anything below probably here is where I'm going to start not bringing these up but I highly recommend for any player is just like find your fast mods splice them up and pray to the gods and get lucky um, and just keep doing that and this is why I save so many resources so I can demonstrate shit luck and good luck in the moment um, but you're just kind of looking for those and then the blues use a split resource with the greens so you're gonna want to kind of just again you're just wishing and hoping um, but that's just blind shooting right that's not like crafting mods for intelligent build to play that's just bringing up your speed secondaries um, and that's just like finding what you want to bring up whereas something that has similar stat pools or again like a defensive stat pool of health health defense and speed this would be a fast tank mod kind of thing um, and so that's what I mean by really starting to dig into mod pairings and find those ones to bring up um, so I'm going to switch to my alt, because my alt actually has better mods, because I've been smarter about how I uh, uh, farmed my mods from the get-go, and also how I leveled up my mods. Um, so, same, same deal, um, kind of looking at the mods and looking at the stats, and so this defense plus with 14 speed I don't really want to invest my time or energy on it does have amazing stats and it's got an amazing set but that primary set bonus makes it not as worthwhile as another plus mod that I can just buy in the store nowadays um, this mod is amazing for Scion this mod is amazing for Thrawn but it's a, not a very good set bonus and so I'm just really starting to be very nitpicky because one of the things I've noticed with splicing is we really can look at every mod and choose kind of how we want to craft it. There is luck variation, obviously, um, and then that is time and energy and resources, but um, really finding the mods we love and trying to get lucky on those is much better time spent, I think. That was not lucky. Um, much better time spent digging into your mods kind of thing. Um, so I'm going to try and wrap up the video. I just had my alarm go off. That tells me I've got 10 minutes left for arena because I'm that hardcore. Um, potency, defense, offense. I'm trying to find... I don't have any good triangles or anything that I want to show. Maybe I do. Let's see. Great chance. Nope. Defense, that's a four star. Akbar's got a crit chance. So much better mods on the alt. I'm just kidding. I actually just have better gold mods because I just bought mods out of the store where when the store didn't exist I couldn't do that here we go get me lucky that's not luck that's the opposite of luck that was not good I feel bad for that mod oh that one doesn't have speed anyways yeah I'm mean, I just that's where I'm recommending spending your resources is find your 14 mods and bring them up but don't just bring up all the mods willy-nilly look for mods with some synergy and stat pool and really then hope for some of the best getting protection on that isn't the worst it's an okay tank mod at this point um, oops finding ones with offense and crit and speed not a, mm, that one's not bad there we go offense offense speed and health this one I'll take all the way perfect an amazing mod um, so yeah, it's just, it's just finding the mods that you can be super picky about and, and bringing them up before you just blow your resources on a tenacity plus with speed, potency, defense, and offense. It's just a smorgasbord of stats that I don't know where I would put it. The tenacity I'd love on a nihilist, the speed I'd love on a nihilist, the potency I'd love on a nihilist, the defense, not so much, the offense, definitely not. Like, nihilist isn't there to hit things really, really hard. Um... So it's really like finding what character and then that kind of goes into like building sets for characters and really thinking about that. So kind of the final piece is when you're still farming mods, it's more about what character are you trying to mod. 
Um, so for example, I do not have a good build nest on this account, um, but even more so, um, a couple characters I'm building up on this account would be like, I still haven't unlocked Treya. Um, I'm getting her and I will get her, but what do I want my tray to be? Well, I want my tray to be fast. Everybody wants their tray to be fast, but then after that, do I want her to be a crit damage Treya? Because I need to start farming crit damage mods now to get them by the time she's unlocked. Or do I don't care about crit damage and I really just want to go with the full offense Treya? Um, so like making those decisions can then inform how you farm mods or how you buy mods. And so using this store to buy really strong five star gold mods because there's no point in buying mods other than gold anymore because of the odds and then really using that 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 time and that focus to decide like this is th these are the mods i want to farm so on my alt i never did the jawas but then they made it so i could not have to do the jawas so then farming crit damage mods on my alt just became a thing for treya um so really then looking at every mod and looking for looking for mods that I can put on her to splice up. Defense, not really. Maybe that's not for her. Maybe if I need it for a set bonus kind of thing. So yeah, uh, what mods to splice? Find the ones with two, three, preferably, stats you want in the set with the, the primary stat. Like You need that kind of that Goldilocks scenario for your mods. If you don't have those mods, maybe not burn all your reasons, maybe farm more mods or buy more mods. Um, you know, uh, I think looking for those right mods to splice up is the way to go. Or if you're overloaded with mods like I am um, on both of these accounts, then really just start to be choosy. Don't just start blowing all of your splicing materials on on just mods because we're going to keep getting more and more and more splicing materials like that's that's going to be the the way the game works now but i think that the focus that we need to do is picking the right mods because that's will make your teams amazing um somebody mentioned in chat that mods with protection are the worst to upgrade to 60 and i agree that protection got one of the worst upgrades because it was the most prevalent mod so they just buffed everything else so um so yeah I, I really think that now's the time to reassess our mods and not just splice everything up unless you're a super whale like really choose the right mods so the final piece of that was like fishing um so i recommended before we were preparing for mods to come out to take all your greens up to nine speed if they were showing speed um, and then after mods came out i recommended taking all your purples up to three because purples show three stats and you want to fish oops sorry you want to fish for that last stat um but if you're really struggling for stats you can fish your blues up to six and fish for speed and if it comes up you take it the rest of the way um i don't recommend doing this unless you're getting kind of desperate for mods but as you're farming new mods you already are desperate for mods you need mods i need them for treya so looking at your any of your mods i wouldn't recommend a defense triangle well it's showing defense and health and it got speed you know what screw it every once in a while no nope, that's ended up terrible offense on a defense mod great um so yeah uh f the three advice get your two six e's a week that's advice number one number two splice your goldilocks mods really look at the stats if you don't know there's 900 people on our Discord server that can give you answers. Not all of them are going to be the best, but at least you have a sounding board to sound off of. So splice up the good mods, the mods that you really feel good about, that you're like, those stats are really solid. Let's see what happens with it. And then number three, farm to the character. Like, figure out what do I want my Zalbar to be when he's fully, fully leveled up, fully geared up, ready to go. I don't even have the ability to farm him yet, but what do I want him to be? He's a tank, so I want the tank stats. He's got counterattacks. He's got other cool things. Like, figure out what you want and farm those by those mods so that you can power them up for for the character. Um, I have to do my arena now, and so if you have any questions, you can ask in Discord. You can watch me. I should win this one.
I should win this one easy. So you can watch me win this one. And then I'll jump over to Fleet and Moriarty can watch me get my butt kicked of bugs that I hate so much. Uh, that didn't work out. <laughs> oh, what? The, um, and, no, it's fine. Uh, Treya's gonna isolate, no, she's not. This is not gonna work out. I thought it was gonna work out. It was gonna be perfect. I was gonna do this, then I was gonna do that. It just didn't time it right. I think it was that nest opening move that didn't daze Nihilus that screwed me. Um, we'll see. Isolate on Nihilus. Give it to Ness so he can do another AoE quick. That worked out. Um, stun. He's already fractured. Stun him. Now I can turn the tables. I keep an ability block on her. He doesn't have nest. I'm used to fighting people with nest. Um, okay. I think I'll be able to annihilate. Oh, uh, it's going to be Scion. It's going to force me to annihilate Scion. I want to annihilate Treya, but it's going to force me to annihilate Scion. Because I got the pain. There it is. Just gotta control his annihilate and we're good to go. No questions. Who did I lose? Oh, the Sith Trooper. I don't care. That's what he's there for. Okay. Now if they're on. Annihilate. I'm gonna annihilate Treya, but I'm gonna kill Thrawn. Mm, yes. I might kill Nest. That was damn <coughs> close. Nest is gonna die. Called it. Poor Nest. Um, no. She'll remove those? No, she doesn't get to remove them. I forgot. I don't know why I'm attacking her. I'm not gonna annihilate her. This fight's over. I just forgot. Oh, time's up. I got a minute left. Hurry, hurry. Isolate. Steal. Kill. Uh, damn it, that was the wrong target. Kill. Auto. Do I have the time? Do I have the time? We did it. Thanks everybody for watching. Um, there's a bunch of other streamers on the Alliance Gaming, if you want to catch other streamers. Um, T-Money and Godor Maurice do YouTube videos, but they also do live streams. Um, Reality Skew Gaming uh, also posts some stuff up there. Um, we also have Roman and Godor Maurice again uh, doing our Alliance live stream. And then uh, Stan and Sparrow, who are in our cluster, do a podcast. So if you need more info, or if you're just bored and want to listen to somebody else talk about the game, um, Thanks for watching, guys.